Marta, I'm wondering about the aesthetic question in your choices of artists in this Biennale. Uh, when you talk about aesthetic, it's, it rings an interesting bell because uh, someone like, uh, you know, the philosopher Bruno Latour worked a lot at the, interaction, uh, at the intersection of three different kinds of aesthetic. The artistic aesthetic, which is how do we become sensitive to something through the means of uh, art. The scientific aesthetic, which is how scientists deploy some sorts of setups that allows us, to, uh, that allows them to actually uh, get, get an understanding of the phenomenon they're studying. And finally, there's the question of the political aesthetic, which is how do you become sensitive to a question and therefore come to mobilize in order to uh, take a position toward that question. And this exhibition, really, we're, we're trying to gather those three aesthetics together, the uh, artistic one, scientific, and political one together. And that's, the, I guess, really one of the big aims uh, of the show. Yes, but the thing is that uh, it's an exhibition in a museum. That's it's sure. not a book, for that example. That we agree. So. That we agree. But an exhibition in a museum can allow you to do things that are amazing in terms of like creating connections between various practices. So right now you see that I have a painting behind me, but you also have various mediums that are at stake from kinetic sculpture to like video installations to very sensorial things, very sensorial, I shouldn't say things actually, approaches to create uh, artworks. And so I think that this variety of medium, this variety of, uh, of uh, projects is really what offers, let's say, uh, a spectrum of uh, aesthetic, um, of aesthetic, uh, let's say, stimulation that is something that is proper to an exhibition. Aesthetic with a very large meaning. Aesthetic in uh, the most uh, classical sense of the term, that is like, how do you become sensitive to something? To and a as it speak about today, it's very technical too. I mean, technological. A, a, a technological aesthetic. Well, I mean... Not behind, here, for sure. No, but that's interesting, actually, you talk about that, because, the, I mean, we're standing behind a painting by Huang Aixin, who's dealing with the question of the effect that are created by screens, by showing both, you know, like those uh, little pleasures and at the same time horrors that she's exposed to all the time uh, on her day-to-day -day basis when she's... Uh, when she's uh, looking at her Instagram or such. So that's, you know, like that's how the screen that are part of our day-to-day -day life uh, yeah. does influence her practice as an artist. But then she works with uh, a medium that is uh, oil painting, which is perfectly fine. I mean, there's not a specific, there's not, we're not especially technophilic, I would say, in the choice of the artworks. I say we, the curators, uh, Evaline, Bruno Latour, myself. But, you know, like uh, if technology can be a tool to create uh, artistic forms and practice, that's great, too. I mean, artists are very, f they have the freedom and the, 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 the capacity to gather such different kind of, uh, of tools, of resources together to give sh shape to it. And how does it work? You as a curator, I mean, the professional of the art in a way, working with a philosopher to choose the artist, to find the artist. It's, uh, that it's a very intuitive process because there is, there are, let's say that as a philosopher, there's work, there's intuition that try to depict some forms of intuition about the world. And it happens to be that artists also have intuition about the world that they kind of like capture, swerve around, that they kind of develop, that they kind of, of try to grasp. And my job, I would say, is like to try to find uh, some sort of equivalence, helping them to meet one another, to encounter one another. But the philosophy is not above uh, the artistic production. It's, it's one medium among other mediums, being it uh, kinetic sculpture, oil painting, or uh, tapestry, which are a few examples because, of the mediums. Yeah, because 99% of uh, the artists, I don't know them, for example, so I was wondering, was it you? Was it Bruno Latour? How did it work? Well, I mean, I uh, did quite a lot of research uh, because we had the time to, to be there in, uh, we had the time to, to, a bit of time to prepare this, uh, this biennial. That was great. We had a year and a half to do so. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I went to look for a lot of artists and then I would talk about it with uh, Bruno Latour and then with uh, Evaline as well. And Eva would do the same. So uh, pretty much, and 
actually that's one of the things that was important for us it doesn't matter if the artist is a huge star or if but it's there's someone who's no huge a... star uh, you'll see fernando will be a big star like ah, okay see. in the future fernando was invited in seven biennials the year of the covid that's mm. giving you something and then because there was covid there's only two that he could do but no, no, uh, like there is uh, this, uh, this appetite. But I mean, Shark there's Atlantic. not uh, Anish Kapoor, or I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, that's the whole it's point. It's not a like, reproach, huh? No, no, it, no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm trying to, to, to say like in the sense that there are, there are some artists. We had, for example, a beautiful piece by Pierre Vig in Taiwan mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we had a garden and we had a sculpture by Pierre Vig that was absolutely magnificent. But in a context where, you know, we didn't have that beautiful garden here, we had a beautiful space, but not a garden where we could show it in the same way. We thought maybe it's not, you know, like as ah. urgent to show him here. What was really important, though, is to give the chance to uh, Taiwanese artists, for example, that had never been um, shown in, uh, that had never been shown in, in, in Europe, actually. Or even also, I mean, I'm very happy that we showed the work from uh, Marianne Moret, who, you know, like had few museum shows, but not that many, and, and whose work is, is, is absolutely uh, spectacular. Hong Ai Xin, she's between New York and uh, Taiwan, and she has, uh, well, typically this globalized uh, way of life, uh, let's say. So she has a, a, a career that is mainly in the US and in. Uh, in Asia, and that's true that that's also like one of the nice things to be able to, to, to bring her here. Merci.